give a short and memorable definition of a function. Anybody want to tell me what they wrote down or, or even just copied straight from the notes? An equation with what? Its own input for every output? But like how many? Like one input for every output? <laughs> okay, I, I think I understand. Uh, Bailey? Okay, so the input can't be repeated. I think the way we're wording that might be a little bit switched. Uh, yeah, so does that <laughs> all right. So so something along the lines of one output for each input. Or each input has only one output. I think that's what we wrote. Um, so we, we might be a little bit might have gotten those words backwards there. Uh, by the way, let's talk about how to grade this. And by the way, you could also call the input X or the output Y. That would be fine. Uh, so there are 13 questions here in total. Or at least not, not questions, but 13 separate things that you're asked. So uh, I don't want to do one point a piece like I usually do because then this would be worth more than all of your other quizzes combined. And so instead, uh, we're just going to pretend that each one is a, we're going to call each one a half point. And so that it's not six and a half points, which would also make it kind of weird, we'll pretend that there are 14 of them and you already got one of them right. Okay. So there are going to be seven, seven total points. And so each question is going to be worth a half point rather than a full point like usual, just to scale it down. All right. And so if you switch those two words, you're going to get half of a half taken off. You might do minus a quarter. And so we'll just subtract from seven. And each of these is going to be a separate question, as far as I'm concerned. So this first one right here, number two. Is this a function, according to our definition? Yes. Each output, sorry, each input only has one output that goes with it. So it is a function. Each input only goes to a single output. So no inputs get repeated. What about the second one? Yeah, and here we can just use the vertical line test. Any vertical line only crosses once. What about this third one? Yes. Now what about the x to the fourth? Is that not a problem? Okay, yeah, it doesn't affect the y. So if it was y to the fourth, would that be a problem? Yeah, that would be a problem because when we solve for y, we would end up with a plus or minus. Uh, but you notice it's already solved for y, and we didn't end up with a plus or minus. Well, I didn't actually ask you for a reason unless you said no. So we'll just pretend you, I didn't hear anything. Okay, uh, the fourth one. Is this a function? No. And of course the problem is this one and this other one. So, the, so this one input gives you two different outputs. That's the problem right there. So you might have written something along those lines or you might have just circled the two ones. Said, hey look, there's my problem. Something like that. So this is not a function. What about the fifth one? No, and you could just use the vertical line test if you wanted to. Hey look, here's a vertical line. In other words, an input, one x value, and it gives me three different y values. That's not a function. And for this last one, we have x equals y plus two times y minus two. So that's y to the first, that's y to the first. Looks fine to me. 
until we multiply them together. And what would we get if we multiply those together? A y squared and a minus 4, which means if we solve for y, we would, in, we would have to do a square root of both sides and we would get x plus 4 equals y squared and square root, so we get y equals plus or minus because we took the square root of both sides of the equation, x plus 4, which is a sideways parabola and does not pass through vertical angles. So, in short, no, it's not functional because of that plus or minus. Uh-huh. Okay. You got it forever. It, it is, but but you have to understand when you so if you graph if you graph uh, y equals x plus two times x minus two, you're actually graphing a reflection of the original line. And remember when we switched the x's and the y's, do you remember which type of symmetry that is? Yeah, so you're, you're graphing it. So you could do that. And this is actually something we'll do with uh, when we talk about inverses. But, and so, so if you graphed it like it is, you could graph it, but then instead of passing the vertical line test, you would want it to pass the horizontal line test. So that if you flipped it, it would pass the vertical line test. Yep. It's cool. It's cool. All right, so there's my problem right there, the y squared, or something about the plus or minus. Okay, number three. Give an example of a number that is a real number but is not rational. Anna? Let's find out. Can you? Hi? That's real? Yeah. Is it rational? Can you write it as a ratio of two integers? You could write pi over one, but it but to be rational it has to be a ratio of two integers. So is pi an integer? Is pi a whole number? It stands for something, but it doesn't stand for a whole number, an integer. Right? Because it's three point something something something. Yeah. So so pi is real, but it is not rational. So pi works. Uh, give me another one. Uh, such as the square root of 89. Okay. Okay. What if I said the square root of negative 89? Is that a real number that's not rational? No. What kind of number would that be? Yeah, it's imaginary. That's i times the square root of 89, if you remember that from last year. Or even if you don't, we talked about it a second ago. That's an imaginary number, so it's not real. That would not qualify. Yeah, so it would still be a complex number. Hmm. Um, what, about, what about the square root of 9? Would that be a real number that is not rational? No, because it's 3, which is rational. Okay. So something something like one of those two things would work. A seven where? Here, like a seventh root. Sure, that's a that would be irrational. Like that. Yeah, that is also an irrational number. It doesn't have, just have to be a square root. It could be a cube root or some other root. Or a natural log or things we haven't talked about yet but you might remember vaguely from last year. Okay. Let's talk about this last one. Okay. So here we want to put each of these numbers into as many categories as possible. Into as many categories as possible. Now here, I'm going to give you some partial credit because we're asked to do two different things. One is what I just said, list all the sets of numbers that would include whatever this number is. So in other words, put it into as many categories as we can. That's one part of the question. The second part is to pick one that is the most specific. So we're going to break 
this down. This is five separate questions. So we're going to break it down, since they were already a half point each, into two quarters. So if you did, if you missed one or the other, then it would be a quarter point. Let's look at the first one. 89, is it an integer? Okay, so I'm going to write out the abbreviations. It's an integer. What else is it? Is it rational? Sure, I could write it as 89 over 1, a ratio of two integers. Is it real? Well, it's not imaginary, so it must be real. Is it complex? Yes. Remember, real numbers are complex, too. They just don't have an imaginary part. In fact, every number we ever talk about all year long will be complex. Uh, the only numbers we that aren't complex, I don't know if you looked at the homework, asked you to do a, a little quick internet search and see if you could find a number that was not complex. Did anybody? Yeah, hyper complex numbers. They're, they're nothing like the normal numbers that we use. So every number that we use is going to be a complex number. So the answer there is always yes. And is it a natural number? Could I ask you to count to 89 on your fingers? Sure. I mean, you, you might have to start over after you get to 10. But, I mean, it's basically it's a positive integer. That's the natural numbers. It's the counting numbers. A quarter point. So which of these is the most specific? So, so getting all of these would be part of it. That's, this would be a quarter point. And, cir and circling the right one or picking the right one uh, would be the, uh, the, mo the most specific one would be the other quarter point. So what would be the best name for this 89? Yeah, natural number would be the best name for it. So that's the most specific. So even if you left one out, you still might have picked the right one. The most specific. Okay, any questions? What about negative 89? Is that an integer? Yes. Is it rational? Sure, I could write it as negative 89 over 1. Is it real? Yeah, it's not imaginary, so it must be real. Is it complex? The answer to that question is always yes, unless I'm asking you about a hyper-complex number, which I won't. Um, is it a natural number? Would you count to negative 89 on your fingers? Probably not. Okay, and which of these is the best? Integer. That's the most specific name that we could give it. It is one of the integers. That would be the best set to include. Questions there? Let's try 8.9. Integer? Whole number, in other words? No. Could I write it as a fraction? Fake bonus points if you can tell me what the fraction is. Yeah, just move the decimal over. 89. Uh, I say fake decimal points because I can't give you this. I, I say uh, fake bonus points. I can't give you bonus points. It is against an ISD policy. Um, is it a real number? Sure. It's not imaginary. I see it. It's right there. Is it complex? Yes. Every number that we ever talk about is complex. Is it a natural number? Would you count to 8.9 on your fingers? Maybe if uh, you had a, a wood shop accident. So let's say uh, rational, that would be the best one, right? Rational would be the most specific choice. <coughs> okay, the square root of 89, is that an integer? Nope. Is it rational? No. Is it real? Mm hmm. Is it complex? Yes. The answer to that question is always yes. Is it a natural number? Would you count to it? No? Uh, okay. So, what kind of number is it? What's the, out of these categories, what's the best one? 
Yeah, real number would be the best one out of these categories. Did anybody put something different? Uh, Haley? Yeah, irrational. So if you put that, that's fine too. Because, because irrational means that it is real but not rational. That's, that's what that means. So if you put irrational, that's technically true as well. And that's fine. I'll count that as well. <coughs> Although you didn't exactly follow the directions. It's cool. All right. Uh, what about the square root of negative 89? So it's not real or rational or an integer or a natural number, just complex. Now, is it irrational? What does irrational mean again? Yeah, an irrational number has to be real. So this is not an irrational number. It would just be a complex number. Or more specifically, it's an imaginary number. But again, that wasn't one of our choices here. So the best name out of these would be a complex number. And that is, in fact, the only of these five categories that this number fits into. Okay. So, put a grade on that. If you're not sure, you can ask me. Um, I'll help you calculate it. But basically, whatever you miss, subtract it from seven. Call that your grade. If you want to know what it is, divide it in your calculator and feel good or bad about it. Yeah.